I wanted to get your opinion on this. Oklahoma hired Porter Mosier. Uh, did you see this coming at all? I did not. I think it's a hell of a hire for them. And I a strange place for Porter Mosier. That's exactly what my thought was. I like I do think obviously Oklahoma Oklahoma has had success. Jeff Capel yeah. was good there. Uh, Lon Kruger, obviously really good there. Like Oklahoma is known somewhat as a basketball brand, but I just wonder, like, I, I, I just, I feel his man in, I, he, I just feel like he belongs in the big 10. Yeah. That I, I kind of, I know that's because I know that I know he comes from Chicago and that's, that's big. That's the home of the big 10. I, it, it just feels weird. To, it's very fish out of water for me. Which I, makes I me wonder. Not, not that he can't take over or win. I think he could win a lot there, by the way. I, I think easily he can rival Kansas as the best program in the Big 12. Right, now he's going to deal with uh, Chris Beard at Texas. So I mean, that's yeah, going to be something but, else, I mean, too. Listen, until, until Texas shows me that they're actually something to be afraid of, I'll worry about I love Chris Beard. I'll worry about Texas when that time comes. All right. Yeah. No, that makes We're sense. a long way from that. I, I do wonder about this. I, I think it's a fantastic hire for Oklahoma, the fact that they could Great you know, convince get. him. Um, That's a get I did not expect them to get. Yeah. I, if you had give me 20 names throughout college basketball of who they could hire, he wouldn't have made my 20 list because I didn't think he'd be interested in that job at all. And I don't know why. I yeah, I mean it's it's a great job. I just a hell of a lot more money than he was he was making at Loyola Chicago. Well, you get a lot better talent, you know, there. But yeah, I mean, you would think so. But I, I mean. Yeah, yeah, no, probably. No, no, no. Yeah, he absolutely he will. can. That's that, hang on, yeah. now. hang on. You can't just poo poo that. No, you're he, right. You're right. He 100 percent will have substantially, marketably, measurably better talent than he ever had at Loyola Chicago. That's that is 100 percent true. You okay. are correct about right. that. Um, I, I do sweep that under the rug like that's all. Well, maybe no, it's a it's, little better. Come we've on. talked about this. Uh, are we before. talking? Or are we not? A couple of weeks ago, we talked about Porter Mosier and and you know what would he end up doing. Right, like yeah. what? What is it? And we talked about this in the group chat and everything else. Like, what makes sense for him? And I think it really did come down to the fact that it, like, before that Final Four run, if that season had not been a Final Four type of season, if if they had lost in the conference tournament and not made the tournament as an eleven seed, would he have even lasted at the job? Uh, because he had already been there for years and years, and they had not had any success. Now he's had a, a Sweet Sixteen run, a Final Four run. You know, he's done really good things, but, man, he was fired at Illinois State, and, and he got a, a second chance with Loyola Chicago, and it took forever to get there, and he was almost fired again. He would have had to go on back to the assistant co- uh, assistant coach route. Like, I, you know, there is something so, to be said. So let me ask you this. Do you think do you think this is Oklahoma buying damaged goods? Do you think, uh, you know, he somehow made two runs magically, and he's really not that great of a coach? It is possible because, I like, it, it's very possible. But I do think he is a good coach. I think that he wanted to get out and, and, one, make as much money as he could, and, two, have a chance in a league that isn't just a one-bid league, right? Like, at Loyola so, is— and So, I respect, year, the, I respect to having a chance to get in the tournament if the one-bid league is tough. That, yes. You're right. That's a lot of pressure on those smaller schools. I mean, to—, to Imagine, like, because we're fans of, of bigger schools. Like, yeah. Alabama, LSU, it didn't matter who won that SEC tournament championship. Like, both teams were getting in the NCAA tournament. Imagine where everything comes down to a, a conference tournament. And, and yeah. you have to win however many games. And you understand that teams that are not very good all season long can magically get hot over three days in, in a city that they're not used to, right? Like, crazy stuff happens in the sport. We just saw UCLA, who lost their last four regular season games, end up going on a run to the Final Four. It made no got sense. A, got a play-in game. <laughs> it just makes no sense. So there's a lot of pressure involved with that. If you can get one of these Power Five jobs where you know that, or a, a multi-bid league job, I, I think it makes sense, especially when you're going to be getting a raise anyway. So I think it's smart on him. Well, he was but, he was holding a lottery whew. ticket. It was responsible to cash the lottery ticket. I'm okay with that. Yes, absolutely. Um, let's, uh, okay. I want to, I want to get you started. Thanks for listening to the winning cures, everything podcast. The website is winning cures, And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE 
at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.